On today's episode, I'm going to take you shopping with me at the Goodwill bins. I finally had a good amount of stuff that I found at the Goodwill bins today. Last time it was a total bust, but this time I only had 15 minutes to get in there, shop, and check out before we had to leave. So it was like a speed shopping trip, but yet I still filled up an entire cart. Piper also had to get surgery today. It was a really busy day. This is her saying, what? I'm going where? <laughs> and then I will show you the haul of everything that I got. I only spent $41.22 on this trip to Goodwill. And I also got some free furniture. Yes, this piece plus a bedroom set I got completely for free. And I'm also going to show you a quick DIY of how to do a pleated lampshade on a thrifted lamp that I've had for a long time. I am 14 minutes late to get into the store this morning. There was a ton of traffic because it's raining. I already have my gloves on. I'm about to jump out of the car as soon as we pull up. But I have about 15 minutes to spend in the car in the store before we have to check out and leave because we have to head home so my husband can take his truck to school. I don't like driving here. Um, it's scary driving on the freeway that this place is located on. So my husband drives me since he's from here, but um, he has to go to school today. So now that he's back in school full swing, we're gonna have to find little pieces of time where I can hit the thrift stores. All right, here we go. Ooh, I'm so late, everybody's going crazy already. was a lot of garbage today but also a lot of cool stuff if it were christmas i would have totally picked up all those gingerbread men i also got this for piper piper has to get a surgery she has a small tumor on her left foot here you can kind of see it in the video but she um there's nothing wrong i don't have any reason to believe that it's cancer or anything like that and she's healthy and happy but she does not react well to surgery so I'm not super excited to see how she's going to do afterwards here we're just psyching her up getting her excited to go and hopefully that will help her not be as afraid she shakes like a little chihuahua whenever I'm not around and she's just terrified uh, to be without me we're just super bonded she's such a good girl but let's get back to shopping I already found some really cool stuff. It was actually really busy there today. I'm not sure why. This was cool as somebody's DIY, but I really wanted to get the thing that was behind it here, this little garden thing. Make sure you dump out all the things you don't want when you pick up stuff from the Goodwill bins because sometimes you may forget there's a little piece on there that you don't want or it may have something inside it if it's a container. Dump everything out. You want it to be as light as possible since they charge you per weight. Another tip that I can give to you is to make sure that you check underneath the big items. Sometimes there's like a heavy rug or whatever that yellow thing was. Check underneath there because look at that amazing tray that I found underneath that. I also tell everybody all the time to get your faux greenery from there. Right now, the bins were totally full of holiday stuff. I wish that it was like this before Christmas because I could have sold a lot more Christmas stuff in my booth had that been the case. But it's okay. Right now I'm just being really picky about what type of holiday stuff that I am going to pick up. It's got to be something that I'll never be able to find again. Like something really unique, something really cool that I think that people are going to like and that would be worth holding on to until the following Christmas season. And I always find lots of cool chalkboards and baskets and wall decor. The main thing that's hard to get from the Goodwill bins would have to be anything that is breakable. Usually if it's breakable, it is broken already because they just dump stuff into these bins. So be really careful while you're shopping because a lot of times there's broken glass or broken ceramic in there. And another thing is 
depending on your goodwill in your area, a lot of times the people in there are um, not very considerate of personal space. They're also extremely competitive sometimes. So get in there and get what you want. But I got as much as I could in 15 minutes and checked out. All right, now I gotta load everything up. <laughs> All right, guys. Let's see what I got. My husband is off to school already, and it's about to rain more all day long. So I need to get all this stuff out of here now while it's not raining. Plus, I have to go pick up my dog in about 30 minutes because um, her doctor called and said the surgery went perfectly and that I can pick her up earlier than they had originally said. So the first thing I got is this. I use these all the time in my booth as well as in my house for decorating. And I also got this. This I got lucky to get because the lady was actually taking the bin out um, as I was just starting to look through it. And um, it was weird. She like didn't even let people keep looking through it. Usually if there's people looking through it, they'll wait a little bit. But they were in a really big rush to get new bins out for some reason. Um, there was a lot of stuff there today. Uh, last time I went, there wasn't, so it was nice seeing that there was a lot of stuff there, but of course, it's the day that I only have 15 minutes to shop. But this is really cute. It says 24 ounces, and it is like a feed scoop. Also, please let me know how the sound is. I've been having a lot of hard times <laughs> getting my microphone to sound good or using the actual camera's microphone. Right now, I'm using the camera's microphone because I usually film with my husband's phone on his, his camera on his phone. But since he has his phone, I'm using mine, which is a little bit older and not as good. But I'm not using the microphone with this one because every time I've recorded with this one, the sound has been really good. So let me know also how the sound is in this video. Okay. Next, I have this cast iron piece that I can add to a piece of furniture. This is amazing. I love it a lot. I might actually add this to something in my own house because this is my style, you guys. Look. I always buy hardware like this at Hobby Lobby, and I love it. Okay. Next, I have this, I don't know, tray, I guess. Beautiful, made of solid wood. Absolutely gorgeous. Kind of want to keep this, too. <laughs> Might keep this. I don't know. But it's in really great condition. I don't need to do anything but clean it. Next, I have these two. I think they come from Hobby Lobby, brand spanking new. Although, if you shop for these at Hobby Lobby right now, they're only $4.99 and they're 40% off in the spring section. But these are the raw wood ones, and these are perfect to decorate with and use for um, decor flips here on YouTube, pretty much anything. You could use these for lots of stuff. Next, I have like a boxwood or a laurel wreath. I'm not sure. It's real, which I think is amazing, which makes me also want to keep it. And it has the hook on there already, too. I just feel like this is a really um, high quality because it is real and preserved. These are actually really expensive to buy um, that, that are real and preserved instead of the plastic fake stuff. Although the plastic fake stuff still looks really good. I also got this, which was originally $8.98 according to this, and it's just a piece of greenery. I will probably take parts of it and use it in random things that I make over here on YouTube, but the Goodwill Bins is the best place to buy greenery from. Okay. Normally I wouldn't be buying holiday stuff as far as Halloween and Christmas goes, but I did get some Halloween and Christmas today because they're really high quality stuff. So this I can have in my attic until um, August, September time and pull it back out and sell it in my booth. And it will sell, I will build a price at really low since I got it from the Goodwill bins. 
and I think it will create a more high-end look in my booth. This holiday piece seems like it came from Hobby Lobby. It says right there it was originally $9.99, probably 50% off or something. But I got it for practically free at the Goodwill bins. It has a really cute patina to it. And I think this will be perfect for Valentine's Day since right now it is Valentine's time. This little cutie, I didn't even notice, had this bird on it. Look at this little bird in here. How cute. But I thought this would be really good for springtime in my booth right now. Some more holiday decor. This is the coolest Christmas wall decor I've ever seen. Look at that. It's like metallic so unique and it has beautiful frames so these will wait until next year for me to sell them and i got one more this was originally 9.97 i don't know where from but really cute look at the little gingerbread cookies i think it's starting to rain i'm gonna hurry I got these for the kids for Easter. It's brand new in the package, so I have no problem giving these to my kids. This I got from the bin. Well, everything's from the bins. But this I got, um, like, just laying on top of one of the bins. And it's in really good shape, I think. I just need to clean it up and sell it in my booth. This is something else I found just laying on top. Luckily, it is not broken anywhere, which is why I picked it up. Another wall decor piece. This has a lot of scratches on it, but I think, like, look at that's already coming off. I think I can clean it up. I love that it was black because most of these are white and distressed. This was originally $29.99 at Hobby Lobby, so probably $15 because people buy them half off. Ugh, I'm going to move my camera. <laughs> Hide under my trunk right here because it's raining. Okay. It has been raining like crazy for days. Okay, these, I think, are set. They have clearance tags on them. I don't know where in the world these are from, but they are so cool looking. All candle holders, and I love it. So these are probably going to go in the booth. Let me know what you think of these in the comments. Some more candle holders. The White Barn Candle Co., New Albany, Ohio. Let me know if you know anything about that candle company or where it may have come from. It's pretty heavy, and I think I'm going to actually put something on here and on this one as well. Oh, straggler. <laughs> but I'll probably put something like a piece of wood on top of either one of these and make them larger trays. But this is so cool how it is already with a stained piece of wood on top. I think it would look neat. Same with this. This reminds me of a plate that I wanted to buy from the Goodwill store the other day, and they were asking way too much, so I put it back because it originally didn't have a price on it, and when I ask for the price, they always give you a really high price when you do that. I don't know why. Maybe because they know you want it, so then they're like, oh, let me price it high, but then again, the store employees probably could care less how much it costs. I don't know, but either way, it got super cheap, and it is hand-painted. You can see the texture of the paint. I thought that would be really cute for people who want to decorate with this type of stuff for spring. Okay. Another piece of greenery, just a little hydrangea that I can put in something else that I'm decorating or selling. You never know. Then I have this candlestick, which is also from Hobby Lobby, $12.99. And perfect as is. Um, I probably won't do anything to this, but clean it. I got some more of these placemats for tables. Um, I'm actually going to keep these. These seem like it would be easier to wash than the, the other type I got. I think it's called Sissel. I can't remember, but it's like a weaved natural fiber. This is not, so I feel like I could probably wash these in the washing machine and use it on my dining table without worrying about ruining them with my kids making their messes and everything. I mean, it was 
pretty cheap to get it from the Goodwill bins. I got this for Piper so that she has something fun to play with when she gets out of her surgery today. Then I have this silver bowl. How unique is that? It is so pretty. It's probably not real silver because it's turning copper, but really, really cool. It has a maker's sticker on there, but I can't quite make out what it says. Let me know if you recognize it. Next, I want to keep this too. I just want to keep everything I got today. But yep, really dirty. Disgusting actually on the inside. But that will clean up. Since it is metal, I know I can clean it. Okay, what else? This one kind of bummed me out. I'm not going to lie. I could not find the third one anywhere. And uh, I decided that I'm just going to move the middle one and put a terracotta pot in the middle with maybe that hydrangea. Who knows? Whatever I want to put in there um, and sell it in my booth. But look at how pretty the pot is. It's a gray color. It's just really unique. I actually have something like this in my hutch. You probably saw it if you saw my last video where I decorated my hutch for spring. And if you haven't seen that yet, go check it out. I'll try and remember to put it in the cards right up here for you to click. Okay, next. Next, wall hanging baskets. You can never have too many of these, and they're in great condition. I will probably just give them a good spray down with the hose on the high pressure setting. Make sure I clean off any dirt and dust, and then spray it with a disinfectant to make it smell nice and pretty. Okay. This one I wasn't sure if I wanted to get or not. It was originally $10.99. It looks like it's from Hobby Lobby. Yay! Whoever donated all their stuff from Hobby Lobby, thank you. Because I bought it all. <laughs> At least all of it that I could find in 15 minutes of shopping. But this I will put in some kind of arrangement. I think this would be beautiful for Valentine's Day or for Christmas or just some traditional decor. Maybe in a blue and white vase or something like that. But I love how big and chunky that they are. So cute. Alright. Last but not least. Ta-da! Some embroidery. How cool! It's fall, but I'm going to try and sell it now just because I feel like it's something people really want right now. Embroidery is so in. Cross-stitching, so in. Sells like hotcakes if you're somebody who resells. This has kind of a weird smell to it, so I'll make sure to freshen it up. <laughs> Sorry for all my faces. I have a very animated face. But... That is all for my thrift haul. Now I'm going to show you something else that I got actually yesterday. I got for free an entertainment center buffet piece of furniture like in brand new condition. This thing was probably like $1,000, whoever bought it. And then I also got a bedroom set. So I got a dresser and I got two nightstands all for free. These people were moving and they just wanted to give it away. They didn't want to deal with it. And it's in amazing, almost new condition. I will show you <laughs> what that looks like. I had a dresser, um, like a French provincial dresser that was in my formal living room. You may have seen it in my living room makeover videos. If not, check them out in my home tour and room makeover um, playlist. But it looked really good, but this looks amazing. And I would have never spent the money myself buying something new. So this was like seriously a blessing. Let's get going. I'm going to show you the rest of the stuff that I got. And then I have one flip for you at the end of the video. I think you're going to like as well. So I got this massive buffet piece from somebody for free. It was a family that was moving and they wanted to just completely uh, start over, get rid of everything that they've got pretty much and start over new. Maybe they wanted to try a different decor style. I don't know about you, but I love farmhouse decor and all the things that were popular like five years ago. I'm still, I still love very much. And I feel like it's kind of awesome because a lot of people are bored of it already. And so they're giving it away like this or they're selling it for really cheap. So if you're somebody who likes farmhouse, lean into it. Get it really cheap right now. Find all that stuff that you wish you could have afforded new and go buy it cheap used right now because people are deciding to decorate more modern or more moody or whatever it is that's popular right now. I love all the things that are popular as every single fad comes by. I enjoy different things of it. But for my house, this like rustic farmhouse style, I love very much. So I'm excited that I finally get to have a piece like this in my home because I never would have bought this 
myself at if it were a thousand dollars there's no way I could never justify that expense and then for our bedroom we got this dresser and two nightstands look at how nice this dresser is and if you're wondering why I moved a dresser out of the way from the other room and put in a buffet that's our little video game area so my husband and I are nerds and we play video games together and that's where we play video games. But in our bedroom before I had some very antique dressers here and they were really beautiful but I want something more light and like I said I really like that farmhouse or French country style and I like this tone. I am going to have to repaint my bed as you can see it's in like a mahogany red finish and definitely clashes with this bedroom set and I'll definitely make a video of me repainting my bed but here's Piper after her surgery. Poor girl. She was not doing well. This was actually the very next morning actually and she was really drugged up yesterday and then today she is just wiped out. She's nine years old so she's not some young spring chicken but I have never seen her this tired. She didn't want to eat. She wouldn't drink any water and this is the most I've seen her interact with that squeaky toy Normally, this thing would have only lasted her like 30 minutes before she destroyed it, but she didn't even touch it yesterday. But let's move on to the DIY. I want to show you how to do a DIY pleated lampshade. Right now, pleated lampshades are all the rage. I feel like it, everyone everywhere is showing it, like Liz Marie, who does um, that blog, and she's written all those books, and pretty much anybody who's doing the cottage decor style or the traditional or antique decor style that's very very popular right now you're seeing tons of these pleated shades in their decorations so I'm going to show you how to do it without having to sew anything and over top of the existing lampshade that you have for your lamp this one I got thrifted and it had a little bubble or bow in the lampshade so I just glued that down first and then what you're going to do is you're going to take whatever fabric that you're using and mine was in a stripe pattern, so I made sure to do it vertical so that the stripes would make sense on my lampshade. But I cut it down to about the height I would need to make my uh, strips of the pleating in the lampshade. And once I have it to a size that is manageable to work with, I'm just going to cut out strips. I need the strips to be long enough to where I can fold them because the pleat is folded and ironed when you look at it, but I'm going to fake all of that. Instead of it being sewn, I'm going to just fold it and I'll show you how I do all of this. But I need to cut the strips to where they are wide enough to be the size pleat that I want once I fold them in. You don't want those frayed edges showing, which is why you're going to fold them. And if you want it to be more shabby chic, you could show the frayed edges, I guess. But for this, I didn't want it shabby chic. I want it to be a little more cottage or antique looking or, I don't know, just really cute. <laughs> but you want it to be big enough strips to where you can fold either side of the strip inward. And then you're going to take your iron. And this is a really um, like cotton burlap fabric. So um, it's, it needs high heat. So I put my iron on high heat and I fold it over one side and the other side to where none of the frayed edges were showing and this is the piece that I'm going to work with on the very end and then the rest of them I only folded one side in and I made sure to fold them in at the same stripe over and over again on the fabric so that way when I line them all up on the lamp the pattern flows smoothly if you have a different type of pattern just be mindful of how that's going to look when it's folded and then has another piece next to it that's also folded. So you want to try and line up as much as you can the pattern. And if it's something really abstract, it's not going to really matter. But this was a very linear striped pattern, so I had to be really careful. Then I'm taking my hot glue gun again, and I'm just putting a stripe of glue across the lampshade. And I'm going to put the folded side first on the glue. So you're only folding one side of the majority of these pieces. The very end piece, you're gonna fold both sides in and iron it to where it has the pleat on either side. I hope that makes sense to you. But then I, I glued down the other side of it and then I put another bead of glue across the very edge of that piece that I folded. Something you need to keep in mind is that a lampshade is smaller in diameter at the top and larger in diameter at the bottom. So as you're gluing it down, you need to make sure that the top pieces are closer together and the bottom of the piece is farther apart because you need to create that, that bigger bell shape at the bottom. So you can see that I'm doing that here. 
the stripes will look totally okay if they're not perfectly aligned but it's just kind of the um, the general idea of you're lining them up well and you're making sure that when you folded them you folded them all in the same stripe etc and once you get all the way around the whole lamp you're going to trim off the excess on either side if you need to or just one side if you need to and then I ran out of fabric so I had to use this random scrap that I had that you saw me rip off in the beginning to create some pieces to fill in that last part so they weren't long enough obviously and I <laughs> stacked them together glued them together and then put them on there i hope this all makes sense to you visually because i'm probably explaining this terribly verbally <laughs> then i'm going to create the piece that goes all the way across the bottom part of the lampshade and the top part of the lampshade this is the the piece that's going to finish it off and make it look as though it was done professionally that you may have pulled out a sewing machine to do this <laughs> and that it won't look like you did it all with the hot glue gun <laughs> like I did <laughs> but you're going to fold over the edges and then you're going to fold it in half once you've done all that you want to make sure that the iron is creating really good creases so that it keeps its shape when you go to glue it this is also going to make it look like it was sewn or done professionally but you can see I fold in both sides so that there's no frayed edges and then I fold the entire thing in half and give it a really good press here I am attaching those pieces that I created because I ran out. Now you can kind of see what I was talking about there. And I made sure that this is in the back of the lamp because usually the back of a lampshade has a piece that is overlapped anyways. And so these little spots right here, I'm not super worried about them showing on the back of the lampshade. But now it's time to put the edging on here. You can see what I mean about making it look professional and covering up the frayed edges. You want to be mindful of the fact that it is a circle, so you're going to try and make sure that you're not creating any weird creases as you're gluing it down, and then trim it to fit. I also took the hot glue gun and glued down any parts that were sticking up a little bit, and then I repeated the exact same process on the bottom of the lamp. I think it turned out really cute and really professional looking and it's a really easy way to DIY something that you already have. I'm sure you have fabric at home that you would love to make into a lampshade and I'm sure that you have a lamp that you wish you had a pleated lampshade on. So go ahead and start this craft. It's easy as can be. And if you got this far in today's video, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. If you liked what you saw today, don't forget to hit subscribe and I'll see you next time. I post new videos every Wednesday and Sunday. Bye!